Hi, I'm Lynn Nash for the Matt Cardle Appreciation Group and we've been very fortunate to be afforded some of Matt's time for an interview just prior to the Swindon gig. Hi Matt, it's really nice to meet you. Thank you so much to you and to Will for giving us the time when we know you're so busy. No, honestly Lynn, thank you so much for, you know, for everything you guys have been doing. It's an absolute pleasure. I mean it. Well, it's our pleasure to support you. So, you. Uh, We've got a few questions here. Awesome. Um, that we thought we'd uh, not try and touch you too much. Okay. Um, First of all, it's, uh, you know, as fans, we all kind of have our routine for a gig day. So mm. what's a typical gig day like for you? Um, typically, um, on this tour um, specifically, well, I would get to the venue at about 4 o'clock um, and then we go straight to sound check and all, all the crew and everyone will turn up um, probably first thing in the morning, uh, you know, Sparrow's far, but we get here at about... Yeah, five sound check. So we'll do that for as long as. Sometimes, if the sound needs tweaking a lot, then we'll take till six o'clock, and then Roxanne will do her sound check. But if it's um, a quite a similar venue to the previous one, then it can take up to ten minutes just running through a couple of tracks, um, and then it's dinner. And then I'll come up here um, to my dressing room, and I'll try and spend about an hour and a half warming up my voice, um, having the old gin tonic. A few Harry Bun. <laughs> and then, yeah, watch Rocks while she's on, and then after that, come down and it's time to go. Showtime. Showtime. So, that, that point when you're walking out on stage, what's going through your head? Um, I, th I think it's just, any, it's just a little prayer to anyone who's listening um, that it goes well, and that more, you know, more importantly than anything, that the crowd enjoy it and want to come again. Which so obviously they do. Um, so you walk out on stage and then you get that, we've seen this immense crowd reaction that you get every time mm. you walk out on stage. How, how does that kind of affect you? It's just very overwhelming for one. Um, and you know, it's, it's humbling at the same time. It's just like, I'm there doing something I I've wanted to do my entire life for something I love doing more than anything else in the world and if people are enjoying that then it's it's almost too good to be true. It's like if you're having fun watching me do what I love to do, it's like you can't get much you know, a much better recipe than that. And that I, yeah, I just feel very lucky. Right. And then you kind of you go into your um Stars and Lovers at the beginning. Yeah. And then you go into to all the album songs from, yeah. from letters. Um, you've said previously that All For Nothing um, is kind of like one of your favourites of the album. Yeah. So when you're singing that, what kind of emotions does it kind of bring up? Well, it's um, it's really just the you know the sentiment of the song, and I mean partly why I love it so much is musically it's fun to play. It's you know it's in six eight and it's it's just a different feel and. Lorenzo's got some great solos, and we're all, for some reason we're all really tight on that track. Um, and it's a big vocal as well, and I think just to kind of express the, it's easier with that track to really express the emotion that went into the writing of it, you know, because of the way it constructed, because of the time signature of the song, and the way the melody's constructed, and, and some of the notes that we hit, and things like that. It's just, it's really, it's a good vehicle for the. Um, you know, for the sentiment of the song. So a lot of your songs are like that. They're kind of like really kind of pretty intense. Mm. But you get to kind of like a point in the gig where you can relax enough to just to kind of have fun with a song. Yeah, I mean, we didn't. Want, I, well, I didn't want to mess with the songs too much because um, there's kind of it, there's t two sides to it. I feel one side is people want to hear the song how it is on the record, and another side of it is people don't want to hear the song how it is in the record and they want a completely different version of it but you've got to try and find a happy medium and I'm always playing around with the melodies like I'm always playing around with the melody and, and amazing and stars and lovers just to just to mix it up and so, you know just to not, in also to show people that it really is live and this is not to track and there's no pre-recorded vocals or anything like that it's really it's different every night um, but I don't really settle down until after the first time ever I saw your face, I don't think. Um, yeah, the whole top of the show is still getting a feel for how the crowd are enjoying it. I'm still settling in, the band is still settling in, warming up. and 
Um, yeah, it's after the first time I saw your face, and it's really, I mean, there's no talking after that, and we just start lost and found, and it just kind of drones out. Cool, so that, that's, you kind of get over that intensity peak, and then yeah, it I, gets a little bit easier? Yeah, there's the whole going off and coming back on again on, um, on slowly, which kind of settles me again, you know, because it's, it, it, I come off and have a cigarette and just go, okay, I think it's going okay, I hope so, and then, you know, I can hear the guys just doing their things, so then I come back and it's like, yeah, it's just a bit more settled in, so I'm seated and I've got my acoustic and stuff. So it's a bit kind of more comfortable? Just a bit more comfortable, yeah. The, um, you know, you, the crowd reaction, you have to judge the crowd reaction, and, and we've seen some am amazing crowd reactions. Yeah. And um, we had a, a fan we saw recently tweeted that, that you bring out the inner teenager in us all. <laughs> it's like, what, what do you think is it about you or your music that, that's kind of stirring people's passions in that way? Um, that's a very difficult question to answer, but I'll try. I mean, I think... Uh, well, I mean, the show's massive, and the show does it. It it puts people across to an audience in a way that never happened otherwise. You know, say it was James Blunt or James Morrison. You know, you don't know their personality that well. You just know their music and what they look like and things like that. And then with the show, there's a real connection with the personality, and it's you know, if you enjoy someone's personality or you like them, then you feel an extra attachment. I feel. Um, and that's partly why um, I think that might be the case. Um, and you know, I'm nearly thirty. <laughs> <laughs> so do you so think it's your just audience kind of yeah. identify with you because you're of that age? Yeah, I also, yeah. I think that's another, uh, you know, another thing. I mean, like, there wasn't the connection. You know, I don't think there was that kind of connection with the guy from One Direction. That's mm -hmm. a very young girl. Yeah. You know, and there are some some mums out there that are like, all oh, those boys are cute, but it's. They, you know, 17, 18, 19. Yeah. I think it, it's a, kind of like refreshing to get an artist who, who comes into the four, you know, at a mature age, not not a kid, because so many of them tend to be teenagers. Yeah. Um, to be honest, and you know, I'm so glad that it happened for me when it happened and I was old enough and wise enough to, to deal with it and to know what's really going on and to know how to handle myself and to do all the change changing that I was ever going to do way before the show because you know if it happens to you when you're 16 you don't know who you are yet I didn't really know who I was at 16 I know what I wanted to do but you know your personality hasn't developed and all that kind of stuff it's like you've still got a lot of growing up to do and I did all that which wasn't a lot to be honest <laughs> I'm a big kid and I always, always will be but I th you know I'm glad the show happened when it happened so talking a little bit beyond this now, into you, you've already said about the second album. Yeah. Do you think that having been on tour with Letters will affect how you'll write and produce the second album? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and I was only thinking about that yesterday, to be honest. That, I mean, you can't write for a specific. You know, you can't really write for gigs. Um, I think, as far as, uh, like, song tempos, I think, I mean, we chose the relevant songs for letters, um, but we don't have many, like, real upbeat songs, so I think that, you know, there's definitely room for, you know, starting out and just thinking, you know, a, lo a lot of times, we, like, when we wrote Starlight, we just started with the beat, all we had was that going, mm. and that, you know, that's, you know, it's an easy way of, of, of writing get a crowd up on their feet. Uh, so the next album, I think there'll be a, a little bit more of that. I want there to be a bit more like, oh, factor in it, you know? Yeah. Um, and just a bit, a lot more raw.